اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان الرجیم بفضل اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الحمد للہ والحمد حقه كما يستحقه حمدا كثيرا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم العن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم العنهم جميعا ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله أجمعين محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد Something that in your eyes so insignificant could be the difference between you entering paradise and God forbid entering the fire of hell sometimes people sit and weigh sins they'll say this sin is greater than that sin or that sin is far worse than this sin for example I listen to music but he, listen, he drinks alcohol so he is worse than me or I steal but he lies so he is worse than me when the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says that the grander sin is the sin that you take the lightest the one that you think is the easiest sin the one that you don't consider who are you to grade a sin? Who are you to give a value to a sin? When Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abideen, in his dua for repentance in Sahih al Sajidiyah, he says that even when you commit a sayyi'ah, and a sayyi'ah, if you look at tafsir of a sayyi'ah, it is the smallest of mistakes, the smallest of sins. He says, Kana yastahiq. Whoever commits even a sayyi'ah has made what incumbent upon themselves? Has made it mandatory that they receive every single punishment that Allah has accounted. Everything that Allah Azza wa Jal has said he will be punished with because he turned away from Allah after everything God has given him. So you are innocent when you're born? The moment you turn, you are condemned. If it isn't for Allah's mercy, if it isn't for Allah's grace, then we would all perish. So this is why we need to take heed. This is why we need to pay attention. Because when we take heed and pay attention, to what Allah Azza wa Jal has called us to, then Allah overlooks our misdemeanors. Allah overlooks our mistakes that we make. In fact, even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, our intercession is for who? For Ahlul Kaba'ir min Ummati. That the ones that commit even the greater sins, the greater sins we intercede for them. But that they know that when they committed these sins, when they did wrong, they weren't of those that looked at God as if He is someone that is easy to sin against. They committed it. They were in a situation where their nafsul ammar abasu 
made them or put them in a position to commit this sin Iblis or Satan made this sin look attractive to them and then they committed the sin not that they committed the sin with the slightest of care not worrying about the consequences or the ramifications of their actions now when it comes to those that have a filthy tongue there are also those that easily come to conclusions those that make accusations you know the ones that put an equation together they see someone walk past an RSL club and the next second they say you know Evan Fulan he drinks he was walking past an RSL club they draw the conclusion automatically I remember one brother called me and he said I know a person whose daughter I saw with someone and I said Khair, you saw her doing what? he goes she was walking and they were walking alone and they walked into a place I said and conclusion he said well you know and I said no I don't know he had already come to the conclusion that the worst thing is possible the worst possible thing has taken place and there are people that have caused problems if you look at the Middle East if you look at the issue of honor killings which is one of the most ludicrous things one of the most outrageous things that exists they kill a girl and generally most of the time it's based on an accusation that someone walks in and says to the father well you know she was with this other guy another person says yeah she was with him and then the father looks around and says she's dishonored me I will kill her I will take her life because she has taken my honor so he says she's taken my honor so I'll take her life yet there's nothing to prove anything to begin with there's no evidence just someone has said a word someone has decided to make it public you have these people they sit down and they say oh you know yeah his daughter yeah she's this she's that I'm not talking about when you point out someone that is you know if, if a woman is working for a living in this illicit field there's no issue that's what she is that's her field you know in the case of some of the enemies of Ahl al -Bayt, their women their mothers were openly like this and it was known that this person was the son of Nabigha or this person was the son of a cocktail of men this is these are hadith that Imam Hassan alayhi salam says to Amr ibn al-As Antal ladhi tanaza'a fika khamsatun min Quraysh you are the one that five men disputed over who was your father in this case there's no accusation this is an apparent thing but we are talking about those that make accusations of things that aren't true those that accuse innocent women and Allah Azza wa Jal has made it clear about this action several times in the Quran one woman came in and said Ya Rasulullah I have committed a bad action and I want to know how I will get repentance he says what have you done she said I have a slave girl and one day I was so upset with her I said Ya Zaniya yeah, Zania means she said to her, A Zania is someone that commits adultery. So you call someone a Zania, it's like calling someone one of the words that mean licentious or lewd or illicit. And they're the best words we can use, other than the other probably 10 or 12 synonyms that exist for that word. Or we can use some Shakespearean terms that are <laughs> trollop or strumpet or something that Shakespeare would have used that they don't use today now other words generally are considered to be expletives today now these words that she used this single word the messenger of God 
was angered at this point and said to her that you are accountable from her. She has a right on you on the day of judgment because you have accused her. And this sin that is committed just by saying this term is called kadaf. This is when you accuse someone of adultery. The punishment for this, as mentioned in the Quran, is 80 lashes. Now I'll explain it in further detail. This woman returns home and she takes a whip and she gives it to a slave girl and says, strike me 80 times lest I have to face God on the day of judgment. And the slave girl says, I can't do that to you. I can't hit you. And then she said, Idhan, what do I do? She says, you're free. She gives her money to become free and she allows her to become a free woman. Then she returns to the messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and tells him what she has done. Even after this, the messenger says, inshallah, this will make up for what you did. Not this is a guarantee. Just to let you know how far this accusation could go. How much trouble you could cause with such an accusation. Allah Azza wa Jal warns the people we should beware of what we say. Remember yesterday I spoke about those with filthy tongues, even those that joke. Someone sent me a tradition today, a narration to add to that. He said there are five people, I was reading this narration in 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 one of the books of Al Hur al Amali Allah Ta'ala Ali. He says five people that God does not look at and there is no mercy for them on the day of judgment. The fifth person, he names several, but the fifth, he says, those that joke, you know, when they call mufaka, when people joke, be shatm al wal ummahat. Those that joke with swearing to mothers and fathers are in this category. Now let's look at this point in the Quran, in Surah An Nur which Surah An-Nur is recommended especially for one to teach their children, especially their daughters, to teach this Surah at a young age. It is a recommended Surah. It warns people of how? It warns people of being moral. It's a Surah that contains all the verses with regard to morality and how the proper Islamic conduct is when it comes to sexuality and etc. So anyway, I should say et al. وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءِ فَاجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَةً وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ عفواً Oh my God, you know when you copy and paste Arabic words fly here and there. وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَهَادَةً أَبَدًا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Fasikun ended up halfway through the sentence for some reason. So anyway, this verse says, وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ It speaks about a muhsana. Generally we associate it with a married woman. But here it means a free woman, a woman in general. A free woman, a woman that isn't a zaniya, basically. A woman that isn't someone you call the illicit words, that is under that category. Anyone that calls a free woman, a woman that isn't under the umbrella of being lewd or licentious, a free woman, if someone accuses her of being a zaniya, if he says a word, one of the synonyms of zaniya, if he says this to her, it says here that if he doesn't bring four witnesses to begin with. Now, this gets, and we'll explain as we go along what we're getting to. This person is entitled under, that means the hakam al-shara is to get an order for this person to be lashed 80 times. This isn't a joke. This isn't something we can go around and dishonor people. 80 lashes. In fact, 
Then he says, وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَهَادَةً أَبَدًا You cannot accept when they come out and they give, uh, they testify to something. Their testimony is not accepted. They become, what do they call those um, witnesses? Um, what's the word when there's a false witness? No, in, uh, in English. There's actual, there's actual... When Shahid Zur, as Samahat Sayyid was saying, that someone that is a, a false witness, but uh, 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 you know you have a credible witness, and you have uh, someone that commits um, perjury. But well, I don't know what the term for someone that commits perjury is. Perjury is when you lie in in a court of law. So someone that is automatically stamped as a witness without credibility. I think that's the closest we can get it to. A witness that has no credibility. This person's automatically, as Sayyid mentioned, Shahid Zur. This person is a witness with no credibility. Firstly, this person cannot give testimony to anything. He can't say, I witness this take place. Imagine Shah Ramadan, the Eid comes. He says, I saw the crescent. Thanks, but no thanks. We know what you think. We know what your opinions on other things. This person can't lead the prayers. Because he's someone that we don't give weight to. Until when? The next verse continues to say, Except when they repent, they need to repent. Now, what does it mean that this person Allah Azza wa Jal says إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكُ وَأَصْلَحُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Firstly they have to repent and they have to fix the situation I have to fix what I've destroyed I need to make up for what it is that I did wrong How do I do this? Man says that he asked the Imam سألته He asked the Imam عن الذي يقذف المحصنات تقبل شهادة بعد الحد إذا تاب that this person that accuses a woman of adultery is his testimony or when he testifies as a witness is it accepted after he has received his lashing okay and he has repented the imam says نعم قال نعم so then he says he asks a proper question a question people don't ask generally he says, Wama tawbata. What is this tawbah that he has to do? Well, sometimes you hear tawbah, people think it means stuck for Allah. No. This is one of the biggest thing, things that comes to repentance. People think that they can go to Arafah. You know how many people go to Arafah and they still owe people money? Sometimes you may owe someone $200 and you're off to the Hajj. You pay six, seven, eight thousand dollars, whatever you're paying for the Hajj. And you owe someone two hundred, this two hundred is still in your neck. You still owe that money. This is in your debt, you haven't made this up. And some people they go to Hajj, they owe money, they couldn't care less. They've hurt and harmed other people, they don't care. They go and view the Kaaba and they don't remember these people that they have affected. He, he asks him, what is the Tawbah of this person? This person has harmed someone. Could you imagine someone accuses you of adultery? For a man, it's a big issue. But for a woman, it's her world. A woman, it's her world. Do you have a look at the way a man is? You know, even in the world today, you know, because this world's just becoming, this world's really, honestly, it's becoming so in, indifferent. When I say indifferent, no one cares. You know, you know, yesterday I mentioned the article about pedophilia. That, that, that they say most normal men, this is what this article says, says that they have sexual tendencies towards children. It's normal for you to have sexual tendencies towards children. The article I read today, I was thinking these people have declared war on God. The article today says that same-sex couples, that means two fathers or two mothers, have the children in this relationship live healthier 
lives and are happier. They're healthier and they're happier. These people don't read the articles of how many times you read these articles. Go look for them. Same sex couples, two males that have a child that they're molesting or they're trading around the world. They just totally ignore these articles. It's a declaration of war against God. This world is so indifferent. This world has become so immoral that today if you tell someone, oh, this guy was sleeping with this many girls, he goes, yeah, I'm a stud. He takes it as a compliment rather than see himself. In fact, you see people, they talk about their past glory. It should be their past shame. Adultery. But for a woman, it's the worst thing in the world. And proof of this, when's the last time you saw a woman that was licentious that admits to it? How often you see a girl, you meet her, and you've seen where she's been. There's not a field that she hasn't grazed in. And then you ask her, and she says, I'm a virgin. Never seen a guy in my life. So imagine a righteous woman that you call a licentious woman. This woman is righteous. And you accuse her of this. You have taken something from her. Nabi Musa, ala nabina wa alih wa alayhi salam. If you ask about the story of Qarun, Qarun was the cousin of Musa. Qarun, according to our traditions, was the wealthiest man. When you say wealth, we're talking probably the wealthiest man that ever lived on the earth. When Allah mentions Qarun's wealth in the Quran, He says, أَتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ When you hear the word kanz, you know what kanz means? Kanz means treasure trove. Has anyone seen the, the Count of Monte Cristo? And they see that cave, that's called a treasure trove. This man had treasure troves. This man had gold like you cannot imagine. They say from his knowledge, according to some Mufassirin, they say this knowledge was alchemy, which many people have researched, unable to understand. Alchemy is the study where one can change the properties of a metal and turn it into gold. Whether this is true, whether it's not, God knows. But they say it's a knowledge even great thinkers of the past. I'm not, th- I'm not sure if it was Archimedes or someone like that that was actually researching one of uh, uh, the, the studies. I, I don't know his name. I need to actually remember who it was. But he was actually researching to find out about this alchemy. So even great thinkers of the Western ways looked into this. Now... Qarun, what brought about his demise? Qadhaf. This is what ended him. What did he do? He got a woman that was known in the village by many men and made her come out before the public while Musa was speaking and say, Ya Musa, how do you claim you are a man of God and a prophet? When last night you were with me. Imagine this in front of everybody. فَغَضِبَ Musa. Musa became angered. Could you imagine? This is a prophet of God. For him this is everything. Not only this. She is dishonoring his message. Being a prophet of God. She stand. This is a thing that affects the prophets and the imams. When people are attacking what? you Sometimes you see a person abuse the imam and the imam moves away from them but sometimes they question the actual authority that the imam has like in the case of imam al-radha when he ordered the tiger sorry the lions to come out of the tapestry or, or on the actual on the actual lounges where they were sitting to become animate and come out the reason he did this was this man was questioning the ability of the imam questioning the authority of God this is where that harms him so Nabi Musa the integrity of a prophet 
That means Allah Azza wa Jal, then that means that the prophets are like the prophets that are mentioned in the Bible. The prophets that are mentioned by the Jews and the Christians and the prophets that even other sects of Islam claim that existed. Prophets that would get drunk, prophets that would um, shame their neighbor, prophets that would commit illicit acts. So when she accused him, Musa said, who sent you? And she could see his anger for this point. And when he found out from her that it was Qarun, he asked Allah permission to punish him. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran that everything Qarun had, him and his wealth and his property, everything he owned was taken into the earth. Musa ordered, ordered the earth to swallow him. This is how much it affects. So how do I make up? I have to come out publicly and tell the people, imagine this, now you shame yourself, that this woman is a good woman and I am a liar. I have made an accusation against this woman and she is innocent of this accusation. Why put myself in this position in the first place? Why put myself in a position when I need when I need to make amends for it. In another verse, in the same surah, because Taban has to be an open Tawba, unlike the hidden Tawba that we do ourselves, which is between Aflaha man salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Unlike the, op- the hidden Tawba, which is between us and God, this open, open Tawba. This open repentance must be done pub- publicly because I accused this person publicly. In another verse, in the same surah, it says, Inna alladheena yarmoon al muhsanat al ghafilat al mu'minat lu'inu fi dunya wal akhirah wa lahum adhabun azim. Now, as for those that accuse an innocent woman, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions here See, you always hear about punishment In the Akhri In the hereafter And, and, and cursed, uh, someone's damned And cut from the mercy of God But he says these people Are cut from the mercy And damned in the dunya So in other words You know when someone comes up to you And says um, You know so and so I think she is with So and so you're not supposed to say, really? You're supposed to say, You're supposed to humiliate him. Imagine, listen to this. Imagine he had yaqeen. Forget. Imagine he actually saw, as they say, al mil fil makhal. He actually witnessed the act of adultery taking place in full detail, explicitly. Even then, you're supposed to call him a liar. Taban with the case of a husband and a wife is a different situation. Because the husband and a wife with the Islamic ruling is that the husband witnesses against the wife four times and then on the fifth time he, he, he basically brings a curse upon himself that you know there's that line and then vice versa then the woman denies it four times she witnesses. That's the, in the case of the husband and wife put that aside. But I'm talking about in general situations. When a man comes forward to accuse or a person comes forward to accuse an innocent woman, even if he has witnessed the act of adultery, you're supposed to call him what? A liar. Not say really. What else happened? Fill me in with more details. Because in the next verse, it actually mentions those that augment the situation. They are the ones that get the lion's share of the punishment. The ones that spread the good news. Or the bad news That let everyone know this story And let it be known They're the ones that get the lion's share of the punishment This tongue Is the most important thing For you to think about working on Once this tongue Has been settled The other parts of your body are elementary it's a formality to fix them whereas with this 
This is the wildest beast that is on your body. Once you control this, everything else becomes easy. Insha'Allah, we discuss other subjects relating to taqwa and we will finish with this point. Wa hada walhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin.